This is my video review of the Oster bread maker. Um, it's a good bread maker. Um, I had a bread maker before this and I decided to replace it because it was starting, the pan was starting to rust out a little bit and uh, the Teflon inside was starting to scratch. So I decided to get a new one. This one has a slightly larger capacity. It's got, uh, I think it's, uh, it's a little bit bigger. I don't remember what the units were. Um, but uh, the, the bread pan's a little bit bigger. Um, one, the lid kind of pops off kind of easy, and that's, that's a downside, but uh, it's not a huge deal. It's like a plastic hinge, and I, I know some people have complained about that. I don't see it as a huge problem. My last one had a plastic hinge. Most of them are gonna have plastic hinges, um, and I don't think it's really a big deal. It's just, uh, it is a little annoying that this one comes undone so quickly and easily. Um, but uh, other than that, I really like the bread maker. Um, one thing I will say about bread makers in general is that you probably do not want to actually, I don't recommend actually cooking bread in them. And the other thing I don't recommend is actually following the recipes that come with the bread maker. Um, the internet is such a wonderful resource for recipes. I highly recommend just looking up recipes on the internet, um, trying a few out and uh, seeing what you like. Um, the ones in the bread maker are usually pretty generic and won't make the best bread in the world. Um, so you can probably, even for white bread, you can probably find a better recipe on the internet. Um, if you do decide to cook bread in it, what will happen is you'll end up, you'll cook it with this paddle still in the bread. And uh, it will, you know, you'll have to pull it out and it'll leave a big hole in the bread and when you slice the bread, It'll, and also, this is kind of a weird shape. Um, what I highly recommend that you do do is that you pull, you, you mix the dough, you pull the, using the dough setting, you pull the dough out and you put it in a regular bread pan. Um, you would normally let it rise for about a half an hour with a towel on top of it. And then you put it in the oven and you get a really nice loaf um, that, looks, that looks great and uh, you're not gonna have that thing in the bottom. It takes a little bit longer. Um, if you really need to use the timer setting to have the bread ready when you get home or something like that, then maybe you cook bread in this thing. Um, I've only done it once or twice and I really don't find it that's useful. Um, what I have done a bunch of times is I cook pizza dough, um, I cook cinnamon rolls, I cook raisin uh, cinnamon bread, um, and I cook pretzels and like neither, none of those things are things that you're going to want to actually cook in here um, But it does a great job of mixing the dough and the reason why I use this is because You have a bunch of dishes that you use when you normally mix dough first you would use a mixer and Then you would knead it on the countertop it takes a lot of work to knead it um, and then you put it in another pan and you would let it rise and this does all of that in one pan um, and this pan is it's covered with Teflon. It's super easy to clean out. I'll show you that later. Um, but basically what you don't want to do is get it wet or uh, when the dough's still wet, you don't want to clean it. You want to wait until the dough dries and then it'll just rub right off. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that later. But it's super easy to clean um, if you do that. If you try to deal with wet dough, it's a mess. But if you wait for it to dry, it cleans real easily and it cleans much easier than a mixing pan. Um, a mixing bowl and it cleans much easier than a bunch of flour all over your counter for kneading and you know your, your rising bowl isn't going to be that dirty but it's a, just an extra dish and this is just super easy to just you know that's why uh, what I use this for the most is pizza dough. So here I have the ingredients for a uh, thin crust pizza dough um, and what it is um, you always want to add your liquids first this is three quarter cup of water it actually the uh, bread maker comes with this measuring cup and this measuring cup, um, they're pretty nice to have. I have other measuring cups, but you know, it comes with them. Figured I'd use them, they're easy to use. Um, so three quarters of a cup of water, always add your wet ingredients first, um, and then you add your dry ingredients. Um, I got uh, a teaspoon and a half of salt. Um, you always want to add your flour last, or second to last, and your yeast last. I usually do a divot on top of this, the uh, flour and I put the yeast in there and you don't want to have your salt come in contact with the yeast until you've started the actual mixing. So if you're putting it on a timer, you can put these ingredients in, you put the salt in second, um, a teaspoon and a half, um, two cups of flour, regular all-purpose flour, um, 
And if I were setting this on a timer, I'm going to start it right away. But you put a little divot in the flour. Add this is one teaspoon of yeast. Um, I highly recommend um, getting a jar of yeast if you're going to cook bread a lot. You don't always, you know, a regular package is two and a quarter teaspoon. You notice I only added a, a teaspoon because this is a low rising. Um, it's a thin crust pizza, so you want it to rise a little, but you don't want a full packet. So I cook a lot of bread. Um, it's both cheaper and, you know, it's more efficient to just get a jar of yeast and just use it that way. Um, so, um, like I was saying, you put the yeast in last. I could then set it on a timer and it would be fine because the salt isn't coming in contact with the yeast yet because the salt is above the flour, or the salt is below the flour, the yeast is above the flour. So that's generally how you want to mix it in there. Um, and then um, on this one, I go to menu select to nine, and it does it for an hour and a half. And I hit, uh, you can add time to it. So I can bring it back up. You know, you can make it like eight hours. I think you can do it out like 10, 18 hours. I'm, I'm not sure what the exact maximum is. Um, I've really never done more than an hour, uh, nine hours. Um, for like work and stuff like that um, and then you just hit the start button up top and it uh, it'll start mixing it up all right so here the dough is done um, pull the pan out um, and unplug it it's fine. Um, it looks like that looks like uh, looks really good it's got a decent amount of stickiness it's just about the right amount um, I did add um, a teaspoon of flour. It was looking a little too sticky um, during the early mix cycles. It stops a couple times. It's a good idea to check it and add a little flour or water as needed um, to get it to the right amount of stickiness. It's going to be uh, pretty sticky. That's fine. Um, you could take this and you could, this is a thin crust so I recommend rolling it out instead of trying to hand toss it or hand uh, set it up. Um, I actually think you want it thin so I recommend using a rolling pin. Um, to get the, the best uh, best crust for this and you could you know we use a pizza uh, steel not a stone but uh, you could use a pizza stone but I I really like our pizza steel um, and you get a really nice crispy crust it's like a pizzeria crust um, it's delicious um, but what I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna store it in the fridge um, pizza dough will poof up a little bit less if you store it in the fridge for about 24 hours beforehand um, so that's what I'm going to do um, I'm not necessarily going to cook it today, um, so and it can store for about uh, two weeks. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some uh, nonstick spray on a plastic container and scoop the dough right in there. Now these I have lids for these plastic containers, but um, this is going to rise a little bit, so I highly recommend not putting a lid on it. It will probably just blow the lid right off from the air pressure it creates. Um, so I need some plastic wrap. Spray a little nonstick out of the plastic wrap on the side that's going down and put that on top and that gives it a little room to rise without blowing the top clean off. And then I can just store that in the refrigerator. And again, notice I didn't put this in the sink. I don't want it to get wet. Um, if you get this, you know, sticky dough wet, it's going to be a lot harder to clean. Just leave it there a few hours. It'll dry and this will scrape right off and I'll show you that in a moment. If you were going to cook this dough, I recommend the hottest temperature your oven will go, probably about 500, 525 degrees um, for about six minutes. Um, four ingredient piece of dough in a bread maker. This stuff is delicious. Now, as far as cleaning goes, um, I've learned first of all the hard way that you want to pull this paddle out um, while the dough is still wet because if you leave it on there, um, it'll stick kind of bad and it'll be hard to remove. So you want to remove it uh, before the, all the dough dries while it's still wet um, and that'll make it easier to remove. 
Um, so, but you can see down there, that's all we have left is, you know, and it's dried. It's not sticking at all. I can just dump it down the drain. And the pan's almost clean already. Uh, we got a little bit of dried dough in here. Um, that's easy enough to clean out. I use a scrub brush. A little bit of soap. That's clean. And this one's even easier. Quick once over. Um, you do want to make sure this post gets clean. Get that a little bit better. That's it, and it's done, and it's clean. I mean, it's it's super easy to clean. Um, what I don't recommend is I I don't know if this is considered dishwasher safe or not. I don't recommend it. Um, my last one, different comp brand, but I'm pretty sure you'll have the same problem, is this started rusting out down here. Um, and also the Teflon started getting scratched. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's because we were using it in the dishwasher. And as you can see, it's not that hard to clean anyways. So um, I recommend just hand washing it, um, not using it in the dishwasher if you want it to last longer because it won't, it won't rust down here if you're not leaving it in water. Uh, and probably, you know, having other dishes around it and near it is what caused the Teflon scratching. So you do want to be careful of those things. But other than that, super easy to clean. And we're done. Some final thoughts. Um, I really like this bread maker. Um, it's a it's a decent bread maker. Most bread makers are pretty much the same. This one's good. It's got a high capacity. Uh, the lid leaves a little bit to desire, be desired. It falls off a little too easy. But other than that, um, I really like it. Um, I don't, again, I don't really recommend actually cooking bread in it. You can try it. Um, it might work out fine for you, but I, I think a lot of people don't like the bread that comes out of a bread maker. You're much better off just pulling the dough off and cooking in a thing. But you can cook so much more than just bread. Like, much easier to clean than, uh, than a mixer bowl and all the other stuff involved with making bread. It makes making bread that much easier. Um, and honestly, I probably wouldn't make as much bread if I didn't have a bread maker. So um, that's why I love these things. Um, and I, I like the, the nice high capacity, um, and I like the design of this bread maker. It looks great. It works great. I'm very happy with it. Thank you for, uh, thank you for watching.